Welcome to the Church of Thomas. Minister at Large, 103009. I'm going to start with a quote first. It's Reconciler Gospel of Thomas, verse 86. Jesus said, The foxes have their dens and the birds have nests in trees, but this child of the one has no place to shelter and no place to rest his head, being homeless, yet nothing to lose. I think one of the things that happened when the new Christians that followed Peter um, wanted to do is have something familiar for their Jewish Christian converts to go to, which would be a temple, a building, an inside thing. But if we look at what Jesus said and what Jesus did, it's different. First, he lambasted the temple system up one side and down the other. Now what he did do is he went to people's homes. He visited with them, he talked about God, he talked about requirements for worshiping God, he helped them be worshipful, he reminded them of the things that God provides for them and the love that is shared but he didn't say build me a building so that God can live in there because frankly God's way too big to live inside of any building that's for humans it's convenient it's comfortable um, except for when the hard benches start making your butt numb but in in a general situation you get to visit with uh, a lot of people in a enclosed space, uh, the climate is controlled, you, you're not too cold, you're not too hot, uh, and then you listen to the sermon, uh, you visit a little bit maybe, and then you go home. That's your worship. Well, worship is a lot more than that. Worship is every day of the week. Worship is you talking to God and saying, hey dad, what you up to? This is what I'm doing. Hey, that cloud is really cool. What are you doing? Thank you. It's not asking for things all the time. It is sharing your feelings, experiences, hardships, and joys with God on a daily basis. Now, the idea of a minister who doesn't have a building seems a little weird to us now, but I want you to remember that less than 70 years ago, most ministers wandered around. In my family's history, uh, many of the people were married by consent among their friends and family, and then they had a service performed by the minister when he made his circuit. There were ministers that basically visited eight and ten communities and shared sermons and uh, uh, advice, etc., with these communities. But they wandered. They didn't situate in one place and go, okay, everybody come to me. Jesus reached out. He went to the people. But the price of that is that Basically, he didn't have a place to lay his head. He had to re rely on the compassion of others. The people that he ministered to gave him a bed, gave him food, uh, gave him water to wash his feet with, because roads were very dusty. Everybody got really dusty. Uh, but there's a way of looking at this a minister who makes everybody come to them becomes the center of that congregation instead of God. A better way of looking at how Jesus ministered is that he represented everyone he talked to. Think about this as a, a representative in a legislature. If somebody is from a particular district, then that is an elected official who only covers that district. But there's another kind of representative 
and that's basically uh, an at-large seat. Basically, the entire area that is covered politically is that person's responsibility, and that's how Jesus said it. That's how Jesus, Jesus worshipped and represented people. He's representing every human being. So he was the ultimate in minister at large. God bless the whole world, no exceptions. Angel alive.